Welcome back to Tips Farm. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Um, we've been having some pretty nasty storms recently, and power not uh, the most stable out here during storms. So, I had to bust out some of the uh, emergency lighting. Um, we're going to talk about the little kerosene lamps or uh, just an oil lamp. We're also gonna show a quick and dirty way to go and make a, an improvised, uh, well, I don't know about improvised. It, it, it does take a little bit of, a little bit of work. Um, but you can make a quick little oil candle and uh, it's real simple. All right, so I've been using this one just recently cleaned the uh, the chimney again but we're going to open this one up as you can see I've had it for a while haven't uh, pulled it out um, but I've been reading up and apparently there are people that have used diesel well and the diesel fuel at the pump is one ultra low sulfur so it's it's not going to be like back in the 90s and beyond when trying to use diesel on these things it's going to stink you out and be horrendous i don't know we'll, we'll see and we'll also see how the light compares between the two I also went and recently learned that um, this is just way too high. I, I looked at some of my other boxes and they have to wick exactly like this. So I accidentally went and learned something on how to make these things a little bit brighter. And if we look... There's a little tab that goes down, and then on the complete opposite side, there's another tab. I'm just going to reach my finger up, bend it out just enough, and I can pop this off. Maybe this side. There we go. Pop this off. So... I'm not going to throw this away, I'm not going to destroy it or anything, I will be using it here in a second. But, what I need, I'm actually going to be using this as my guide. I don't like how afraid this is, I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Might need some scissors. And with the power of video editing, scissors have appeared in my hand. So we're just going to cut straight across all right Tidy it up a little bit more. I don't like that fray. Or this fray. Yep. That's good enough. Alright, so, before I put this back on, I'm actually going to go get some diesel in here. This right here is regular lamp oil, which it smells, for the most part, just like regular K1 kerosene. Eh, 
there's little additives in there. It's not straight kerosene, but it's pretty much kerosene. All right, let me go get some diesel in that and I will uh, make sure that the wick gets wet also. All right, and I'm back. So, I uh, was actually just at the store before, you know, doing all this stuff. I was back in the camping section, and the K1 kerosene that they had there was, um, hold on. All right, so, while I was at the store today, went to the camping section, saw that one gallon of K1 kerosene, clean burning kerosene, was uh, $11.77. And it's, for all intents and purposes, this stuff over here. Um, right now, the store does not have any of this in stock. Don't know if they just aren't gonna be selling it anymore or if it's just not that season for them to be selling it. Um, I don't know. But, all intents and purposes, $11.77 per gallon. Just recently got this, and it was $4.39 per gallon. So, well, so far, this is good contender. Let's see how the light and, well, unfortunately, they both, well, I do know that this does put off a smell. Um, I'm sure you've all ran a kerosene lamp. Um, how I'm going to be doing this, I've actually noticed that it's a little bit brighter and it doesn't have as much of a smell. Um, which, back to this one right here. So as you can see, I do have the wick in there and it is a much darker color. It is wet. So I'm only going to have it about that high or so. But it's time to put this back on. There we go. Let's go ahead and take this one off. And I don't know if you can see down in that one. I have been using it, so it is kind of dark. That wick is, it's kind of down in there quite a bit. Down below. And it might be a little too low. All right, so. Let's see. All right, so they do both light. up just a little bit. Nope. So this should be sitting right on like that. So this one right here needs to come in. That one needs to go out just a little bit. And it's still not sitting correct. All right, so the important thing is to get it as centered up on here as possible. There is vents. It's supposed to be pulling air up in. So let's bring interesting. I don't know if you can tell here. So you can see that the flame is taller over here. In person, this one looks brighter. Bring them up little by little. 
And I might actually have to blow these out and show you that so far I have yet to actually bring that wick up above that uh, brass mouth thing. Okay, to help with visuals, I have changed these so that the, the edge of the mouth is showing here. But just in case it is difficult to actually see the wick underneath that flame, I brought this one up. Um, it's dry, just pulled it out of its box, just using it to show, like this is where people typically, you know, operate it with the wick up above that mouth. Um, right now, the wicks are approximately right there. Right about there. So that's that's how bright they are. Get back to side or front on flame. And see this is what happens whenever you go and bring it up above. It got all smoky. And now look. It's a real dingy, smoky. It's literally, it is smoking, even at such a small amount, and it's not putting out as much light as it was. And then the, the actual flame, it's misshapened. So let's get back down below that mouth. Yeah, these don't like going up above and then coming back down. It almost seems like that brass mouth has to warm up a little bit to help the oxygen get pulled in pulled in up through here to go and give it a nice clean burn and right there as you can see that wick is starting to come up so let's just bring it back down and get that flame down around that mouth right there I'm gonna have to say that the diesel fuel might actually be a little bit brighter with a smaller flame. And as far as the smell, Uh, honestly, there's not much of a smell on either one. The diesel might be just a faint sweetness in there. It does not smell like diesel fuel. It doesn't smell like a diesel truck. It just, it smells warm. I, I, I think that's the only way I can explain it is it just smells warm. And... I don't know how well you can go and see down in there to see that wick, but it's only raised about that high. So, uh, really wish it was dark out. So actually, you know what? Let me just turn the lights off. All right, so my phone died. Didn't realize that I was running low on battery. I do have it charged it uh, on charge right now, so. We'll go from there. Uh, while I was waiting for it to charge, I did turn these down. And I learned something a little bit. The diesel can get turned down real low. And it stayed about there. Whereas the lamp oil, kerosene, it, uh, It ended up starting getting brighter. It didn't have just a straight blue flame. Now, after some time, they both started to get... Wait, I had to adjust 
the kerosene one twice before the diesel ever even started acting up. Uh, now, I will say, at this low, they do actually put off a smell. And honestly, I think... I might personally like the diesel smell a little bit better. Um, I've owned diesel trucks since 2010, and it kind of just smells, I don't know, it it doesn't smell like the exhaust, but it, have you ever just been around a diesel truck, like an old diesel truck, even with it turned off, it just, it smells like a diesel truck. That's kind of what this one smells like. It, it's the very faint smell. It's not, it's not overpowering. You kind of have to put your nose like right over the chimney. And it's still a very faint smell. I mean, it's not out off gassing that much. So take that as you will. But as you can see, I mean, it puts out a decent amount of light. Turn that one back down. Bring this one up. Bring this one back up. Well, at this point, I think the diesel might be a little bit less bright. At least that high up. It's starting to get a little sooty. And every time it starts getting sooty, it starts putting off a lot more orange light as opposed to the yellow white. And the lamp oil can definitely go higher before it starts getting sooty. That wick has also been ran numerous times and kind of, oh. The, car uh, the lamp oil, kerosene, whatever you want to call it, it's been ran a bunch, and uh, the wick is actually ashed back some at that guideline versus, well, we literally just cut this one. So, it still has uh, some growing pains to do. But for the price... And, I mean, I've read some horror stories of how bad they smell. Maybe because they're not operating them correctly and having the wick up above, you know, doing that number right there instead of keeping it down below. I don't know. Now... The reason why you actually do want to keep it down below is because that little brass mouth, as we saw, there's a vent up in there. So that's pulling oxygen in, and it's going up around, and it's allowing the fuel to burn almost completely. When you go and take that wick up above, you disrupt that convection current that's going to be pulling air in because you know heat rises so the hot air comes out here pulls up cool air well, when you go up there you end up start pulling in from weird spots and it just doesn't do a good burn and that's why they become very sooty very quick and they they have real very very strong distinct smell like this they're clean they don't really smell much and they actually are brighter so i think that's enough for that next gonna show the uh you know the oil let me turn the lights back on there a little better 
So, like I was saying, the oil candle, real simple. Um, this is a old baby food jar. Basically anything that's, you know, not going to melt or burn. So glass and a metal lid. And then, you know, we have the stuff right here to make one. So, you know, it's all cleaned. Just to show that you don't need anything fancy to get this done. Literally just a screw can be used to get your hole in there. Let's see if I can prop you up correctly. So find roughly the center. I do like to go from the inside of the can out and just press in and twist. Kind of like you're, you know, a hand powered drill bit. Make about a quarter turn each time, whatever. If you had a punch or even a drill bit or something, but we're doing this, you know, it's an emergency candle. Maybe it's an emergency time and you need another candle. There we go. Pokes through. See that little hole? All right. Next we're gonna get, it doesn't matter the brand. Yeah, I'm sure this is a uh, peaches and cream. The important part is 100% cotton. We're gonna take our little wick material. I like to go, oh, uh, you can't see that. Here we go. I like to drop it down in there and let it get a little bit of a coil before I cut it. Let me try to set you up. And then, just a quick little cut. I'm going to have to twist the end a little bit. Maybe wet your fingers. And then just thread it like the needle. All right, that's gonna be a bit excessive, but it gets the job done. We'll be pulling it back down anyway to adjust that height. So, since I have two jars here, I'm gonna fill one up with diesel and one up with this lamp oil and see how the candles do. All right, so we got the lamp oil, kerosene, whatever you want to call it. The wick is wet. The wick is a little too tall, but yeah, see? Easy way to go and adjust that. You just start pulling it down until it stops sooting. Um, I will say, be very careful whenever you have an open flame and an open combustible fuel source. It's not flammable like gasoline, it's combustible, but I'm able to use a, a, a lighter to get the wick lit, so be careful. It is fire. And that's very sooty. So.
I'm gonna pull that down much further. Ah, uh, all right, so. I wonder, now that it lit once, can we get it to be a little taller without being sooty? open some. Nope. That's just very sooty. Alright, I do not recommend diesel as a candle. That is extremely sooty. But the lamp oil, kerosene, much better. Now, it is possible that at a later point, I can go and play with this formula, mixing this and some of that gone, allow it to be a bit bright or a bit taller, less sooty. And as you can see, every so often when the wind comes, this becomes a little sooty, but this flame was tiny compared to that one. And even as small as it was, it was super sooty. So I don't like the diesel for the lamp or for the candle, but for the lamp, absolutely. Um, you know, if you have no other choice and you absolutely have to have light, I mean, it will work, but it's gonna be sooty. Um, I'm sure there's probably ways of trying to help fix that. I'm sure if we went. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care for the diesel for the candles, but for the lamps, absolutely. Um, I'll have to go and put this back in the uh, jerry can and probably fill this up with some more of the uh, lamp oil. All right, well, learned some things. Um, diesel can be used in the lamps. Worst case scenario, an emergency fuel source, you can be used as a candle. I'm going to try my darndest to stay away from that, but in the lamp, I do believe I'll be swapping over to the diesel in the lamps. Um, I personally think that it gives out uh, a whiter light. Uh, there's less of a smell, and the smell that there is, uh, I mean, it's super faint. It's it's less there's less smell from it than from the lamp oil kerosene uh, burn um, when the Sun goes down um, I'll probably do you know a little test off camera and it, it'll probably you know solidify my observations here with just the light off um, but uh, you now know some, you know, alternative means to lighting. So, uh, that's, that's always something you can all put in your mental toolbox there. And I, I, I do want to go and say, you don't get stuck on, well, he used a baby food jar. No. Let me go on, oh, just hold on. 
I had I've I've had a old military buddy gone suggest one of these uh what I, if I remember correctly it was a lemonade glass bottle metal top I mean one of my neighbors started using pickle jars and then he went and said could you do three well uh sure so glass metal lid metal can metal lid it don't matter as, as long as it's not going to be something that you know melts or burns if you are using glass make sure it's something that can withstand decent amount of heat that metal lid should help going uh you know kick some of that heat away i basically act as a, a heat sink i don't know be safe don't have open flame where you're not present and able to go and put out a fire if a fire does happen be smart Use a little bit of common sense. I understand common sense ain't as calm as it used to be, but hey. if you're here watching this video, made it this far in, obviously a little bit of flame, you probably got the common sense going, you know, be safe about it. And as always, have a great day.